Hello and thank you for taking the time to watch this microanalysis. My videos tend to be quite long and convoluted, so this is part of a series where I'm attempting to squeeze a whole examination of a film into three minutes. I'm not sure why three minutes, or even if it'll work, but I like the idea of the challenge. Of course the analysis is going to be oversimplified, but I'll do my best to make it worthwhile. Comrade's almost a love story narrates a relationship that spans from 1986 to 1996 between a couple who moved from mainland China to Hong Kong. Director Peter Chan brilliantly uses the romance of new immigrants from China to comment on the Hong Kong people's so-called rootlessness identity. Since around the 80s, Hong Kong has had a notable economic relationship with the Pearl River Delta region of South China, but over time, Hong Kong underwent a process of regionalization where integration with the Pearl River Delta was economically and politically prioritised for Hong Kong's development in the 21st century. This integration facilitated immigrants moving to the territory from the Pearl River Delta, but as a result, they developed an unsavoury reputation with the Hong Kong locals, frequently being treated with hostility and made to feel unwelcome. This is of course ironic, as Hong Kongers are themselves the products of immigration, and as the 1997 handover back to China approached, their complex rootlessness identity began to manifest further. In an interview, Chan commented on the significance of the film being released so soon to the handover, saying, It was 1996, the very time when Hong Kong people felt so lost, so they can relate to the meaning of drifting in the film. The film achieved box office success, and was held in high regard by the locals. But how was a film about new mainland immigrants, who at the time were often perceived negatively, able to move Hong Kong audiences so much? Michelle Hung argues that the answer is in the characterization and casting of the two immigrant lead characters, and how they are skillfully calibrated to allay the uncertainties, as well as tantalize the desires of a mass audience at a critical historical juncture of integrating with China. This idea is most relevant to the female protagonist, Li Xiao, particularly her being a fake Hong Kong girl. Despite coming from Guangdong, which has a significant Cantonese-speaking population, she pretends to be a local, hiding her real heritage in order to assimilate with Hong Kong. This is emphasised when she finally confesses her real identity to Xiao Zhen, when he replies, Then we are comrades. Li Chao immediately shows an unease, and even hostility at being associated solely with the mainland, responding, We speak Cantonese, watch Hong Kong television programs, and drink Vitasoy. We are so close to Hong Kong. Her commonality definition of the Hong Kong identity, via the imagination of Hong Kong and Guangdong as an integrated community, foregrounds the intimate relationship between Hong Kong and the Pearl River Delta, which allows her so-called fake Hong Kong girl portrait to forge a new flexible Cantonese cross-border identity, where the local audiences both relate to her, and at the same time, keep a distance from this new cross-border community. Li Xiao not only embodies the geographical, cultural and everyday commodity similarities between the Pearl River Delta and Hong Kong, but the Hong Kong spirit too, as she personifies the territory's core values, in particular its entrepreneurialism, diligent, smart, down-to-earth and enthusiastic about earning money and investment of all kinds. To her fellow mainland lover, she is the mouthpiece of Hong Kong culture, resembling the local people in both appearance and attitude. 